This is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to cover the next to the last concept in our tour of the cell. Uh, today we're going to focus on the cytoskeleton, which just as the word suggests, it's a support system that exists within cells. Now the cytoskeleton is based not on bones, but on protein fibers, and they come in lots of different kinds, but basically they're all fibers, which means they're linear, and they're made from amino acids, as all proteins are. And the primary job of um, the cytoskeleton is structural or um, functional, um, the met 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 metabolism of the cell. And the easiest way to see this is we color code it. An example of its structural function is to give shape to cells, especially animal cells, which lack a cell wall. And an example of an activity the cytoskeleton works for is cell division. Now, the cytoskeleton makes things move by interacting with other things and other fibers. And to make this happen, you have to have ATP. And microtubules, for example, act like trackways along with which vesicles can be transported. And to make this happen, we have to use something called a motor protein. We're going to watch a video to see this because it's easiest to see when something's moving. But this green structure right here is a vesicle. Uh, the motor protein is down here and it's attached to the vesicle here. It has an arm and then it has two leg-like appendages. Now this is a protein molecule here, not a machine, but it's kind of acting like a machine. And this is working because ATP is going in, giving up energy, and coming out as ADP, a constant process. And finally, this motor protein is interacting with something kind of like a track, which is a cytoskeletal element. In this case, it's a microtubule. Now we're going to watch a video, and we're going to see this working in a germinating seed, which is growing roots and root hairs. So let's watch the video. Let's go back to the PowerPoint here. And in that video, I'm hoping you got to see the germinating seeds producing a root hair. And within the root hair, we have, wait for the clock. <laughs> and within the root hair, we have vesicles being dragged to the tip of the root hair where the growth is taking place to supply the growing cell wall and cell membrane with raw materials stored inside the vesicles. So you can see how the motor proteins make all this happen. Probably the most familiar part of the cytoskeleton are the cilia and flagella, which you probably are familiar with, uh, just in case you aren't. A flagellum is a single long appendage that the cell uses to swim, for example, a sperm cell. And cilia are hair-like projections built pretty much the same way that cover the exterior surface of a cell, like a paramecium, and they wave in unison to allow the cell to swim. All right, so this guy can swim in pretty much any direction. They tend to roll and spin, whereas a sperm cell obviously would be swimming in this direction by wiggling its flagella. So I think you guys get the idea. 
Um, both flagella and cilia are built from cytoskeletal elements, uh, particularly microtubules, and the cilia and, micro and um, flagella move by the interaction of these fibers, uh, powered again by ATP. Another example of the cytoskeleton in action causing things to move is cytoplasm extreming, and this occurs when the cytoplasm inside of a cell, like a plant cell, streams in a loop around the inside of the cell. And again, this is happening because of a different type of cytoskeletal element called actin filaments. And actin filaments, a carpet of them pretty much, provide a track upon which um, other things in the cytoplasm, especially chloroplasts, can be dragged. And this is kind of easy to see if we look at a video. So let me run this video. Now these are the cell walls, and you can see the chloroplasts moving along the, mic the microfilaments, which are invisible. But these chloroplasts are being pulled, again, by motor, probably by motor proteins, in much the same way we saw earlier. This makes sure each chloroplast is exposed to the maximum amount of light for one point in the cycle, uh, allowing for maximum photosynthesis inside of a plant cell with only one leaf surface pointing towards the light. We'll stop it there. That's good enough. Go back to our slideshow. All right, the last thing I want to look at are pseudopods. And pseudopods are extensions of the cell membrane of some cells like phagocytes, which are a type of white blood cell in our blood, and amoeba, which is a freshwater protozoan that is a predator and what they do is they crawl and these cells are able to crawl by extending these extensions of their cytoplasm um, to move in a direction it produces a crawling effect. Uh, this is how phagocytes endocytose food. For example, this amoeba could literally crawl around a food particle and endocytose it inside of a food vacuole. Um, all this pseudopodial extension happens because of vesicles being moved along the tracks formed by the cytoskeletal elements, like microtubules and microfilaments. We'll stop there and pick up with our last part, the extracellular matrix, in our next slideshow.